Welcome to today's episode of CLCI Live, brought to you by the award-winning and ICF accredited school, Certified Life Coach Institute. Sit back, relax, and enjoy today's episode. Hello. Hello. Welcome <laughs> to our Tuesday Live. Welcome in, welcome in. So what are we supposed to say? Like, share, comment? Yes, please comment, especially now while, while we're doing this live. We, we want to hear from you. Um, yes. And never mind my phone <laughs> making really obnoxious noises. I apologize for that. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> so um, what's our topic? What's our topic, Jerome? Jerome doesn't know. We're just, no, we're discussing productive play. Sorry, I'm making sure we get this shared out to everybody yeah. oh. so that they can join us in conversation, ask their questions. I think I thought Brooke was doing that too. So as to, to we're gonna let Jen, we both do it. That's why we're both distracted at the beginning well, of this exactly. live. And now Jen, what are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about play, productive play, play productively as an adult. <laughs> We are, I think we also, we're continuing our uh, Productivity 101 series of episodes uh, or, or whatever you wish to call these right now. Hi, Sam. Good to see you. Um, uh, and we've been talking about things that aren't traditionally productive or thought of as productive. And we're discussing how What happened? No idea. I but we're no back and we're still live, so let's keep it going. Okay, <laughs> keep it going. Yeah. We all blacked out for a second. That was um, we're playing hide and seek, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <We're playing>. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we're talking about productive things that aren't traditionally productive and how they in fact are can be are truly productive. So today we're talking about the uh, play, play, like just and also how this will ultimately relate to life coaching yes. and how you can get your clients to productively play to achieve their goals <laughs> or maybe you can infuse play into your coaching marketing session. or session who knows and um so we'll get there before we get there we're gonna have a little fun we're gonna we're gonna play around a little bit so everybody in this group has been prepped uh with a question you guys all have a question we're just going to ask this question it's a simple game nobody's there's not a win or lose in this we just want to ask this question have a little fun and then we'll talk about it afterwards so um i'll ask mine uh first since nobody has any idea what mine is uh it, this is a would you rather question so which would you choose which would you choose which would you choose if you had to be turned into a giant hamster or a tiny rhinoceros, which would you choose? <laughs> How giant are we talking? Um, we're gonna say a, a hamster the size of a rhinoceros or a rhinoceros the size of a hamster. Hmm. <laughs> I would hamster. choose the rhinoceros because I think I would like to be small but mighty. Yes. Okay. And I feel like the hamster would be wanted for its fur. So I wouldn't want that. <laughs> yeah, I think I would be like a big vulnerable target as a yeah. giant hamster. So I'm also choosing the tiny rhino. Uh, that I was see. That's my go-to. Yeah, that was my go-to as well. And the, the, what I was thinking of is the hamster is not going to survive very long because it likes to nibble. I have a story to go with hamster. So I'm definitely choosing the rhino. <laughs> Well, I think um, it's just as an attractive option to have a tiny rhinoceros as it is to have a giant hamster. So I think it's just as dangerous for both. It's not like a hamster is the size of an ant where you can kind of just climb through the cracks and get away. <laughs> uh, so I'm going with the giant hamster. I'm sure I'll get a ton of hugs that way. And <laughs> hamsters are mean. They're, and they're mean. Bluff. They're super strong. Yeah. Like they're insanely strong. They can like do like And they're push fast. Them. They are very fast. So. Um I however am choosing a tiny rhinoceros because I like all things tiny. So I feel like some really, you know, rich 
woman would scoop me up and give me a good <laughs> life and spoil me as a tiny rhinoceros. I would live good. I'd probably become internet famous. Yes. And um, all I'd have to do is sit around and eat whatever a tiny rhinoceros. Kind of okay. like the singing frog. Remember the singing frog? What year was that? Like thirties or forties? Hello, so, my baby. Hello, my honey. So uh, Jerome loses then. Uh, no, that's just Sam's not backing me up. Oh, wait, no, just kidding. So no, Sam's 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 a bunch of tiny wrong. rhinos today. Okay, so we each get uh, fifty points. Jerome, let's keep, let's keep, well, let's keep remember that. Remember what everybody's responses were. Um, Anthony, since you're so talkative, what is your question? <laughs> what one thing, also, hold on. What's something that doesn't really smell great, but you keep wanting to smell it anyways? Uh. <laughs> Not a question. I've got, I have an answer already. I have an answer. Here. It's, uh, I think some people would agree. Gasoline, for some reason. I know it doesn't smell good, but. No, that smells good. Mm. No, I like how like the smell. Oh. Yeah, and that reminded me, I when I was growing up, I worked in a tire, my grandfather had tire, um, tire business, and so I remember that smell, that is, is a terrible smell, Yeah. but uh -huh. I will go into um, one of the stores, I can't think of its name, Harbor Freight, and it mm -hmm. has that smell, can't stand that smell, but it also is like a comforting smell. <laughs> It's nostalgic. Mm -hmm. Nostalgic, yeah. Jen Brooke. Oh, mine's super weird. Mine's weird. I have a couple of weird ones, so <laughs> go ahead. So um corgi paws smell like burritos. <laughs> I was going to say that one. And I pick up Chloe and I'm like, your paws smell like Fritos. I love it. But it's like weird because it's kind of a weird smell, but I keep doing that. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Mine's weird. It's weird. I like the smell of clean sweat. I don't know how else to put it. It's like a, yeah. or like the clean sweat. I also like the smell of grease, like uh, mechanic mm -hmm. grease. Yeah. Uh, uh, I also like the smell of wood, like cut, mm -hmm. freshly cut wood. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, definitely though, those are certainly like that clean sweat like when i've been working out and sweating and i'm like i don't smell perfect but there's something i feel like it's like it equates to accomplishment for me <laughs> so um there's something about that that i that i enjoy and then i think the wood because i used to uh work in building things and so it reminds me of that being in a shop and then the same with the mechanic hands so yeah. mm -hmm. yep that kind of goes with mine as well that harbor freight the um, tire business. They, my stepfather was a mechanic. Yeah, so all of that scent is very familiar. Uh, all right. Lisa, you're on the big screen. What is your question? I think this is an either or. Or what did, how did you set it? Set your question up? An either, either or. It is an either, okay. either or. Okay. So you're in a crowded room. Would you rather fart loudly and have. <laughs> everyone laugh at you or be the only one laugh, uh, laughing obnoxiously when someone else farts? I, I think I'd rather be the only one laughing obnoxiously. I think I would rather be the only one laughing. I'm yeah, gonna go I would with rather be the laughing. I think that's the, the easier one. Mind you, if I weren't be the one that farted loudly, I would be like, that was me. I'm sorry. I'm not going to try to get away with it. Like, I'm not. <laughs> Not, I'm just gonna cough or I'm just gonna cough up to it immediately. Um, but that's also like as a woman, like one of my worst fears. <laughs> like, but like the flip side of the coin, I have no problem laughing my ass off and still being farted. I, I, yeah, I, I would be the fart loudly and everyone laugh as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm, well there's, something very, there's something yeah. very funny about laugh being the only person laughing at yeah. someone else who farts. <laughs> no one else is laughing. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'd be the person who laughs and points. Yes. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Jen? And even Jen. Dan Jen. responded to that. He said he'd rather sneak in and stealth fart, sneak out, and watch oh, the finger pointing begin. No. <laughs> <That's> terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dan, does that. Dan does that in his classes. 
<laughs> I'm going with the uncontrollable laughter. I'm okay with laughing out loud without anyone knowing what I'm laughing about. I feel like I do it pretty often anyway. So. No SPDs, man. <laughs> um, Jerome, while you're there, what's your question? I got a good one. Wait, wait, think. before we go on, just take a moment. Remember what? Just note. Be mindful of what you're, you learn, what you're feeling, all these things. Jerome, it's your turn. <laughs> My question is, is cereal a soup? Oh, this argument is, this can get, this argument. This yeah, that's get, why this, I said there's some divisive ones here. You know how Anthony left this can Anthony get, wants to go to the dictionary, I bet. I know, I went to, I've been, I've had this argument with Anthony and his okay. friend. Wait, did I miss I it? Say, after doing extensive research, cereal is not a soup. Yes. It I wants agree. to be a soup. It's so close. You would think by by very loose definition, but when you start to get into the nitty gritty definition of soup, it doesn't contain a protein. But now they have protein based cereals. <sighs> Maybe it is I a feel soup. Like cereal. I feel like it's a soup. I'm I'm good with it being a soup. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> this is a, a, we can a call cool it that. spin on whether a hot dog is a sandwich or not. This is a cool spin on it. Yeah. Um, so that I, I missed the question. Is cereal a soup? Is that what yeah. you asked? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Oh. Yeah, I would agree. Oh. It's not. No. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anthony. I don't want yeah. cold soup. I can say that. I don't what know. is it? Jen, 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 brown. Um. So minus fifty points from Jen. <laughs> fifty points to the rest of us in the house of Gryffindor. Are Poison. saying, and they say that cereal is not a soup. So, <laughs> that's all I'll say on that subject. Let's move on. <laughs> Jen, have you answered, or have you asked your question, Jen? Uh, no. Hold on. What's Sam saying? He said no. Cereal, yeah. cereal is I'm not the only one that's fine. I used to argue that it was a soup. I used to argue, but then I did some intense research. <laughs> <laughs> and it depends on which definition of soup you're going off of. You don't even you don't need to research this. It I is have. not a researchable top. No, it's not. It you is pragmatics. Oh you think pragmatically. All you sat down in a liquid, restaurant. Liquid you sat liquid. down in a restaurant and you ordered yeah. soup and, and the you person gave you cereal. Restaurants. Yeah. Fine. Fine. If you're I not feeling well, if you've got a fever. What if you have a tummy ache? You might want soup. You might want cereal. Okay. Or if you have a tummy ache, you're not supposed to have Wait, milk. I got it. Cereal mm -hmm. is like a childlike version of soup. <laughs> no. Great no. is not childlike. I'm going to go. <laughs> childlike version of soup. Everybody's wondering, what the heck are we doing with all this? Yes, I know, we're almost there. Oh, Jen, what is your question? Oh, Jen. <laughs> We've got more questions. Maybe we'll do some more at the end. But Jen, what is your question? My question is, when do you act like a child. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> On the live. Always. Always. I mean, I have my moments. I tend yeah. to be have lots of child like moments. Um, yeah. And I'm What's doing that? art projects, especially art projects or creative things. When I act like a goofball, like when I, like, you know, I have ADHD, like we, I just turn into a goofy child that I'm like, blah, 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 and it doesn't matter. Like I'm like, or speaking and just, I turn into a giant goof and um, I can act like a child. Yes, but how, do how do I define being a child? <laughs> um, I love it. I, I've always believed that being childlike is great. It keeps your imagination going. We'll talk about not childish, but childlike. Big difference. <laughs> I'll do it all. <laughs> I want to do what I want when I. <laughs> I'm always envious of kids though who just get to scream in the middle of the stores or I mean, like something, and they just have no. They just let it out. I'm like, I wish, I wish I could do that without getting arrested. <laughs> uh, Jerome. <laughs> uh, I think daily. Or, I mean, I think we're all just big kids that are allowed to drive. It's really like the <laughs> distinction between us and kids. Um, more specifically, though, I would say maybe with like other kids, uh, just to kind of meet them at their level. Um, if we want to 
give a specific scenario, but I think generally all the time. You know what's funny is I treat kids like they're adults because I feel like that's how they want to be treated. Mm. Like, <laughs> I like I don't get to like I will come to their world a little bit, but I like try to try to address them like they're 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 older than they are because I think they respond to it. I really do. <laughs> um, Anthony, I've never acted like a child. <laughs> When I was a kid, you know, I, I, I know. Look at the cat. <laughs> I know the smile. The cat profile is amazing. <laughs> Here's the rest of what Anthony is. When I was a kid, I acted like an adult, <laughs> and now that I am adult, I know how to act. Uh, so <laughs> never act like a child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, we had a bunch of goofy fun. Everybody asked their question, right? Yeah. Yes. So we had a bunch of goofy fun. Um, I know Lisa was like, everybody's wondering what we're doing. I don't know. But let's let's take a moment before we go into, uh, you know, the nuts and bolts of this topic. Was there anything we learned from that? Um, I think our guards were down while we were having fun. We didn't have this wall up preventing us from saying certain things. Once everybody was sitting around laughing and vulnerable, I think well, once someone was doing it, I think the rest of us joined in on that. So our answers were pretty, pretty vulnerable answers because there isn't really any consequence to giving a ridiculous answer. How I would probably categorize this was like an exploration exercise that was fun. Um, it's not really like you have a goal and you have to win something. Um, there's not like rules or gamification aspects, but it's a way for people to just open up and explore ideas and think less logically um, and just kind of in a free form way. Um, so if you were doing something like this with your clients, it might put them at ease or more willing to talk to you more openly. And I, I dare say, if, I probably should have thought this through and done that. If I probably should have asked you a creative question prior to it, and then gone through the exercise, and then asked you the same question uh, or a similar creative question, and seen if there was a more creative uh, results that had come out of it, because we were able to loosen up and get into that sort of headspace where we're less analytical, less stuck in our heads and more free flowing, more well, like that's, that's kind of what people do like in improv, like before people get into the nitty gritty of like, you know, working improv with other people or in a group improv situation, you play improv games to get people to start to loosen up and get the juices flowing. Um, a lot. And then I think coaching probably needs that because a lot of times Actually, all of my coaching sessions, you just dive into the coaching. And as a coach, you just expect and hope that the client's just willing and open at the beginning of the session, but that's not always the case. So probably playing some sort of improv game or exploration game would be very beneficial to coaches and clients. Or even if you were doing a group coaching kind of oh, thing. Yeah. If you want people, I mean, if you want people to connect and sort of loosen up, and present a little bit of who they are, you know, you, you as the, the coach could, I mean, even though it technically would, but if in a group coaching might start the ball rolling by sharing something goofy or weird or asking a funny goofy question and then being goofy first and then giving permission for others to do the same and sort of go into that space and open up this um, more relaxed and, and, space of feeling more comfortable um, uh, and being creative. Um, well, we were saying that it's got to, you know, let's, we can open it up and start it there, but it doesn't have to be at the beginning. It can be anywhere throughout the process. You do it right in the middle. <laughs> I mean, it's where it seems to fit. There's, there's times as you're bringing it to the coaching realm where um, I, I, I have called it the pressure valve releasing Right, we'll get off on a fun topic like what we were playing around with, and then come back to the more mm, topic that they needed space from, 
so that they can activate um, their breathing. Honestly, it gets you into breathing. It gets you into um, thinking outside the box. It gets you not feeling like you're under the pressure of answering. There's so much that occurs with that. So great experience bringing that up, Brooke. Thank you. Um, Anthony, it looks like you want to say something. Yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of like explorative, but I've seen and heard of two other ways that maybe play can be incorporated in coaching. One is role-playing, which I think coaches do without even the intention of play sometimes. It's maybe more illustrative and very serious, but role-playing can be fun and playful. And then gamifying as well. Um, and put it, putting it simply, that's when you take a goal or a project and then you gamify it. You create rewards and level up systems and all these sort of things that you typically find in like video games or board games. You try to make that into um, part of your goal. Um, so which one would you guys like to talk about? <laughs> the role play or the gamifying? Well, I mean... Which would you like? This is like a choose your own adventure style of play now, where you get to choose your path. I like. Are we going to explore both? Yes. Why do I, yeah. Well, I I want. Let's do game. What is it? Game what? Gamification. Gamifying. Gamifying. Yeah. Is a really heavy topic. So like, I just don't want us to get too deep into gamification. But gamification is awesome. Um, I think you you see it in a lot of apps now. You see it in a lot of uh, even in positive uh, intelligence. We had some there was some gamification going on in it if if you can incorporate gamification into mundane tasks or things that people don't typically like to do it, it's a lot of fun a good example of this for me is i at my workout studio they'll they have a bingo that they'll do and like the bingo on each thing is like a you know it'll say like use three pound weights in a thing use ball of bands go to two classes in one day take five classes in a week. And so like everybody gets it for a certain month, they put it up and now everybody's sort of competing with each other to reach goals, to get the bingos, to get the prize. And you, it, it, it does increase a lot. Like they get more people going, they get people trying different things. They push, pushes people out of their comfort zone. It does all of these great things. And it's as simple as taking what would otherwise be a mundane task, exercising and making a game out of it. Um, so that's a that's a simple version of gamification. You'll see now there's a lot of where in apps and things like that, we really amped this up. Now, there's even an app that is like um, you can put on there that you're going to lose weight. You set goals and objectives and ways you're going to do it and like you get rewarded by outside sources paying you to do it. Like so they have all these like there's a lot of this game theory and gamification that is going into um Things that are that are simple everyday things that people don't like to do, and if you can incorporate that in some regard, it tends to get people to do more and be more involved. Social media is gamified. <laughs> um, yeah. There's um there's a few principles that I see in gamification like across the board. Like you don't because what people might tend to think is that like a client or whoever is being gamified, like whatever the client is, they have to be familiar with what, a, you know, like a video game is, or even bingo, for example. Um, you have to kind of know what bingo is mm -hmm. to be able to get on board with bingo. Um, but there's the basic quality of gamification, which is there's a sense of progress. There mm -hmm. are rules. Um, there is rewards that you hit and milestones that you hit towards an overarching objective. Um, it's coaching. Those, yeah, I mean, that's not- <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I was just thinking, it's got accountability written all over it. Yeah. That accountability piece is in creating it to be more fun. And this, this is sort of a different topic than the, the when we're saying just the play. This is taking, I think, this is something where we're, we're incorporating a lot of times when we say play, it's typically uh, you're doing something. I think I, there's a good quote. Let me find it really quick. Um, the, the gamification is less about like playing and having fun and more about creating a structure and having strategy and, and, and tapping into the things that we find in games 
um, that that Lisa hates. Um, that um, that uh, that also um, make us work harder, make us work towards. You know, I I when I play video games, I play soul games. They're grindy games, and people often like quit them. Um, but it's for me, it's about wanting to get that accomplishment, wanting to beat that boss. Wanting, you know what I mean? And so I'm doing it, even though sometimes I want to throw my controller. Um, and But that's taking that, knowing that we can do that and then applying it in other places can, makes for a really powerful tool. Um, Brooke, you mentioned the word boss. Boss, yeah. Boss. And it's, it's got me thinking about um, how I gamified a bad boss once. So like every time she said something passive aggressive, if I was unbothered, I would get a point. Um, and anytime I identified like a narcissistic behavior, like gaslighting, moving the goalpost, perpetually dissatisfied, I'd be like, that's that, that's that. Every time I would identify something, I would get, and I would just like make it so fun. And I learned so much about myself. And I handled her like a champ, man. <laughs> crazy, Jen, because I do the same thing in my job. <laughs> I'm gonna smack you. I'm just gonna smack you. I'm gonna come to Redlands or wherever and smack you. <laughs> There's a point right there. See that? I got a point because I, I identified physical abuse. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um. <laughs> thank you we appreciate you <laughs> so yeah that's that's gamification in kind of a nutshell um whether it's playful or not um yeah there seems to be something a little more to play than just gamify like play there's like the assumption that play is fun in a way so yeah the quote and and that it, it can make it sometimes for me depending on what kind of player of games you you are um, uh, you, it, it can make just by virtue of making, putting a structure, a comp competition around it, or, you know, things like that. If you're a person that's innately competitive, it can make it more fun. Right. Um, one of the quotes though, that I really enjoyed, and this is not, is this the right spot? No, this is, let me fix up here then is play matters because it gives us a brief respite from the tyranny of apparent purpose, um, which I thought was a kind of cool uh way of saying it um i think there was one more too where it's the act of if if the purpose of playing is more important than the act of playing then mm -hmm. it's not actually playing like the task if the purpose of the task is more important than being in the task whatever you're doing in the task it's not a form of play so like it, the point of play is that you're you're not you're it's not going to result in you being in trouble at the end it's not gonna, you know what i mean like so yeah, that is a good question. What is play and, and why do you guys think it is important too? Like what? Yeah. I can give you an example. Um, the other day, Cambria and I were playing tea party. Oh, yay. You tea set. You've got I'm you. currently playing tea party. Yeah. <laughs> so we were playing tea party. But this is not only this time does she do this. It's just more recent than I can remember something to share <clears throat> she is very rule driven <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> but she has no qualms about changing the rules in mid play that irritates the mm out of me I'm like you can't change the rules so there's that competition between us in this little play that happened um i don't even remember what your question is but what your question was brought this uh, that up for me. What was your question again? What, what is, is play? play? Okay. So for me, that play is where I don't have to stick to the rules. I can just let the flow happen and be, it's got to have some small rule in the beginning to, you know, but once we're in it, the imagination and um, we were looking at that one where it says, what are you of the different categories? I'm like, I don't think I'm any of these. I don't know what, it must be storytelling. It's gotta be the storytelling because the evolution of how I like to play, I think is around fantasy and imagining and uh, building from there. Lisa thinks she's none of them. I think I'm every single one of them. What does that say? <laughs> That's not to say I can't visit 
visit them, but it said, which one are you the most of? And that I, I couldn't I, narrow down. I couldn't pick one because I'm yeah. like, I play in every one of those ways. Like I um and at for, a different also for those of you in the audience who don't know what we're talking about, if we're talking <laughs> about uh, play personalities. So you've got a few of them, which um, I'll just list them off. We've got the collector, the competitor. Well, give us a brief explanation. What does the collector do? Uh, they collect. There. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> it, it's pretty self-explanatory to me, but I'll just I'll just continue. Um, they like to collect things. They like to have uh, a collection of. Objects. We just watched a, a documentary called. Um, Pez, the Pez, uh, Pez Bandit. Oh, Pez so yeah. And uh, it, he's a collector. That's his form of fun. He collects cereal boxes. He collects Pez. He collects, I mean, and all of the, the collectors, they all were, that is what brought them joy. What have spent $11,000 on a Pez dispenser? Uh, that, right there. That That is their form of fun. Um, okay. What was the next, next one? Was the competitor? The competitor. Uh, they like to compete and they like to win. Uh, like, so for Lisa, would not be a competitor. She would definitely, she does not like competition. Just, I like it, but it's with myself. Like, I don't know. I love people. I like, I am competitive. Darn it. <laughs> it's also like your greatest source of like anger towards games as well. At times. I mean, I think, <laughs> yes, I'm competitive to a point, but it's not my major attraction. Like, you know, there's times that studying for a test to me is a competition and i think it feels uncomfortable to have I that know. evaluation i know i'm not going to be the best you know I, i'm aware i'm not going to be the best but like i'll set my competition comes like if i like with bingo i was the first one to black out my bingo and it wasn't about what everybody else was doing i just wanted to black out my bingo and do it a certain amount of time like and it didn't have to beat everybody else but i was like i'm doing it and um so it's not like I'm innately competitive against other people. It's like I'm competitive against myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I'm both actually, because I really enjoy beating people. I really like to be better than people. I'm with you. I love I know that I triumphed over my enemies. Um, that just gives me such a degree of satisfaction. It does feel good to that. win. It does feel good to win. I'm not gonna lie. It does. Yeah. Like, yeah. All right. So, okay. moving. What's the next one, Anthony? Moving on, the creator slash artist. Uh, these people want to make things. They like painting, printing, woodworking, pottery, sculpting, me. things like that. 100%, that was me. So their part of play is to just create something. To create things. Then we have the director. And these people love planning and organizing and maybe even manipulating events. Um, so maybe they think strategically about their play. Um, I do probably that. Probably a think director. Anthony, I think you are a director, yeah. I would say you're probably a director. Yeah. Okay, so I'm less, I can be, a, I can be a director, but I don't have to be. Um, uh, what's next? next? The Explorer. So this person likes, you give them sort of environment to work in or maybe a set of rules to explore and these people, you know, they go wild. They like to- I love that. It. Like, I love like being in a new place, having to learn a new, that's my, see, I love the, I mean, less a direct director, I didn't bond with as much. That's like, I, I, if I gotta. That, but. Explorer sounds like me, but it, I know it can be annoying to play game with me because I'll ask about all the potential outcomes of a particular <laughs> scenario that might not even pertain to me. I'm just interested. <laughs> yeah, can go by pretty slowly with that with that mindset so. and then finally or not finally we have a few more actually the joker um this person resolve, revolves around foolishness and joke telling i'm probably a joker i'm a little joker i'm a joker if the lives go show anything i think we're um, all a little bit of joke i know jen is definitely we the <laughs> antics that happen behind the scenes are and get off, off the rails at times. <laughs> 50 conversations off the rails. It's not that we have too many jokers on Slack. It's just a never <laughs> conversation. But to be fair, like people don't often think of that as a form of play, but like joking is a form of play. And some people love joking around. Other people are very 
literal and serious and don't joke as much. What's funny too, though, like when we, as we've switched from things, like one of my, it's like one of my irrational fears. Uh, when we switched from WhatsApp, we were using WhatsApp when we first went virtual to Slack. I was worried that we weren't going to have the same level of levity and like, like sort of this like conversation, this rapport, this, because we have always had this sort of goofy, you know, just silly. I know I can't help. I don't know why I'm blurry. I've tried. I, I, I can't fix it. Um, so I, um, I was genuinely concerned that we were going to lose that somehow. Um, it did take us a while though. It took yeah. us a while to get in the groove of this, that what was new at that time before we got our silliness back. Yeah. yeah Meanwhile, was... I'm the dictator who's telling everybody to use threads and yeah, yeah we got a designated <laughs> channel now for fun. So yeah. <laughs> we do have a channel. <laughs> yeah, you guys have Nothing a nice else in the other ones. Wow. No fun in the other ones. <laughs> oh man, you are the director. Um, okay, <laughs> what's the next one? So the one after Joker is the kinesthet. Um, these people who like to move yeah. uh, for mm -hmm. play. Mm -hmm. um, so any physical activity. Um, I is love it. Play to them. I like phys I love physical activity, and it, that can be just like goofing around, you know, playing tickle fights, you know, or going out and actually being physical and and like you know. Can you tickle fight with your client? No. <laughs> no. Can you pin your client down and tickle no. them until they pee their pants? No? No, probably not a good idea. No. Well, tickling, no. mind you, it's fun to a point, and then you get angry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm very frustrating. Yeah. Tickle the person more. I don't think tickle fights are fun at all. I have no idea no. who's decided that they're fun. <laughs> it's like not. Jen's the ticklish one. So you would not uh, call no. that play. No. Play, play, play fighting. That's an act of aggression for me. <laughs> play fighting. So, you know, I had a brother and a dad who lived in the same house and all my male cousins. Fighting was a form of play. You got to learn how to fight each other and mm -hmm. wrestle each other and beat the crap out of each other um, and have fun with it. Mm -hmm. um, so... I view fighting as a form of play and not other people are uh, not a lot of other people appreciate roughhousing um, as I do, but it's a form of play. Um, I love like, and yeah, we roughhouse here too. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that there's a physical, the physical, that, I mean, I think for me, that's also, that's a kin kinesthetic. So what is that it? Cool. Is there one more? Yeah, no, there's more. I was just imagining like roughhousing with your client now and, Giving them wedgies and milkies, but <laughs> next one. we're gonna go on to the next one. The storyteller. Uh, this is the last one. Um, imagination is the key to joys of play. Um, storytellers are novelists, playwrights, cartoonists, screenwriters. Um, just they like engaging in storytelling. Um, so, for my first thing, I imagine is Dungeons and Dragons. Um, or just any sort of tabletop role-playing game that you play with other people where you are creating a story on the fly um, to share with other people and for other people to enjoy. Same with like maybe improv as well. Mm -hmm. You're creating a story on the fly um, with joking interspersed in it as well. I do creativity, but I guess it's different. So that was our long explanation of what we were originally referencing about the types of play. Um, but to bring it to coaching and your clients, how your clients think of play is going to greatly affect, you know, what they do in their off time and how they productively play. Um, because if you're a coach and your idea of play is kinesthetic and roughhousing, that might not jive with <laughs> the client who imagines play as uh, storytelling or collecting um, things. So. But let's, so let's talk about, okay, so, really quick the importance of play i'm just going to do a, a sort of quick breakdown because we don't have a ton of time left um and because and i think I'd like for us to have a little more fun before this is over um so the um play they found like in in people who are um do horrible things like murderers and you know people the 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 outskirts of society there's the small percentage almost universally in those people they were denied play as children some regard 
Um, and they, that element of play, it, it so dramatically affects our brain development. Um, it is so important for us, for emotional regulation, for all of these things that play is part of our life. Laughter, play, all of these things. Uh, it is sort of the anecdote for the harder mm -hmm. S we go through. So uh, one of the videos we watched, the guy, he shared that his son passed away, but they found a way to find laughter even after that happened. And they, he said it was a huge part of the process of them moving forward was with finding play and finding laughter. And so it's so very important for, for play to be part of our life. Us as coaches, can you think of scenarios where, where um, we might, where play might come up with our clients uh, in, in one way or another? I, I invite play a lot. I, I, I use the, fun science experiment expression. What would that be like if you ran a fun science experiment on that? Something new that the person wants to try. And just that moment of exploring it with that freedom of, it's a fun science experiment. It's very childlike. It's very, you know, carefree. Sometimes that can lead to them taking action in a place that they felt hesitancy on before I invited the play into it. So I do it a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jen's describing like a kind of role play in that. Mm -hmm. uh, how I've incorporated with clients before is like when it's more so like there's another person that they're um, interacting with in regards to their coaching, I'll be like, let's do a role play exercise. I'm your boss. And now you get to say whatever you want to me um, in whatever way you want. And you need mm -hmm. to express your feelings. And the person will try to act like professional. I'm like, I'm not really your boss. You can be unprofessional as you want. Get it out. And then they'll start to unload. And then I'll be like, okay, so what's true in that? What would you like to say? And what would you like to leave out for your actual boss? And sort of that can lead to some productive um, examples of role playing where you find truthful elements in that. I also know from personal experience, uh, being on the client side, even, and also other clients that, that will come in and want to find a way to infuse more play in their lives, uh, to have more fun and figure out how to do that. And some that also perhaps aren't accomplishing things because they went out and had fun and then now they have guilt. <laughs> um, and so perhaps it's a space, uh, of, where we as coaches can ask questions and maybe get our clients to be comfortable and realize the importance of having some fun in their lives uh, and, and, and assist them in, in not only being okay with having some fun, but, but realizing it's, it's important for them and that their overall quality of life. Um, we as coaches are very goal oriented and work oriented and, and, and we do teach that, but I think it's important to remember also that, that, sometimes uh, just screwing around and doing nothing. Uh, it's often when we are most truly ourselves, right? And most truly in the moment and, and present, you know, and not worrying about all these other things because we're actually having fun and, and being our whole selves, being kids. That's very true of struggling relationships as well. Struggling relationships are serious and they're fighting and they're not having and the thing that they will all tell you is we're not having any fun well how do you start having fun what things can you do that provide you that space to tap out <laughs> so that you can reconnect and rekindle and have fun and rebuild that relationship so all and Mm -hmm. That can extend to other places too. Like mm -hmm. if I'm a client and I, I'm, I'm in a work situation and I don't like it. Well, is there a way mm -hmm. to have, like, like Jen mentioned, mm -hmm. is there a way to make this situation fun? Is there a way <laughs> that was really inventive. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa, that's, that's what you say to me all the time. How can you make that fun? Mm -hmm. And it changes everything. All of a sudden it's like, I have all this creative freedom to just, play in that moment and think about how I can infuse fun into whatever, whatever it is I want to do. 
Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask myself that question if I ever have to fire anybody again. In the <laughs> How can I make this fun? <laughs> I'm going to make this fun for both people. <laughs> Put it in a can of beans. You're going to start doing oh, like, fine pops all right, out. now. <laughs> Let's role play for, for a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it reminds me of Super, uh, what is it, Super Troopers. Because they're pulling people over and meowing at them. And, um, um, so, okay, we we got up a little late. I think we have really ultimately the point of this has been to remind people that even though we are life coaches and we're very goal oriented, <laughs> that that there's also room and importance for us to infuse play. And and often it, finding a way to make things fun and playful can make us tremendously more productive. Uh, a little play today can mean a lot of productivity tomorrow. <laughs> um, a little play today keeps the doctor away. <laughs> True, sorry. So real quick, uh, do you guys have other questions? We're gonna, let's quickly ask some other goofy questions just to end this live with some goofy okay. questions. Right. Are clowns <laughs> funny or scary? Uh, what? Funny. Are clowns funny or scary? Scary. scary. Funny. funny. I think they could be funny. I think they're, I right. think they're always funny. You guys must Brooke and Lisa funny. win. Jen and Jerome lose. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> clowns are scary. I've scary. never seen a clown be funny. Okay, so Red Skelton was pretty funny. Okay, wait. Let's, that we just differentiate. That's because you're not that is <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> Real life clowns, like people that dress up in clown makeup and go to like birthday parties, they're creepy. But, but like movie clowns that are trying to be scary, like Pennywise from it, freaking adorable. And I want 12. <laughs> you think Pennywise is adorable. I love Pennywise. I, have, I would I, never I, sleep again if I watched that movie. I, if ever. Pennywise it, came back in no my no house, way. I would give him the biggest hug. <laughs> Well, bite your face off. I don't care. I don't care. That's I love discrimination it. against clowns. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, what other questions uh, do, you, uh, do we have? Uh, okay, I got one, another one. What mildly annoying curse do you wish you could curse people with? I, I don't. So, one of the things I would say, like, like when I would stream and I would get frustrated with something or somebody, I would I would wish that they would stub their toes. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I hope they stub their toes. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, mildly annoying. I would consider I, that serious. I, paper cuts on them. Paper cuts. <laughs> like, <laughs> like things that I know aren't you know. But like um, the other thing I have kind of done to mess with somebody, we um, rigged a keyboard that every time a cue was pressed, it would put a beep sound in somebody's office. Oh and then I've also gone in and switched two keys on oh. somebody's cue. <laughs> we just have to mess with each other a lot, okay? <laughs> um, and it's really fun. Those are like those minor needle readers. We're just talking psychological torture. I'm oh saying God. mildly annoying, everyone. Jerome, oh, Jen, so Lisa. <laughs> I mean, I think mine's borderline torture now that I think about it. I was going to say, I would just like someone's mouth to just kind of be zip shut for like a temporary short period of time and just really mm. enjoy that moment where they couldn't speak. Wish, wish somebody loses all their internet for a period of, of time or access to social media. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. I love that. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. At this moment, can't think that way. I don't, yeah, so I I don't, don't have an answer. <laughs> usually, if I want to curse somebody, it's not going to be mildly annoying. It's going to be something <laughs> drastic. I, yeah, so. I wish that somebody uh, hits every red light on their way to work. <laughs> <laughs> good one. Who else has questions? I've got one. Somebody's GPS mildly. Okay. I can come up with mild curses all day. This is terrible. <laughs> what does it say about music? Um, so this is, I guess, in op- opposition to the first question. The first question I asked was, when do you act like a child? This question is, what old person thing do you do? <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> That's so rude. <laughs> we all got to this point, the old, 
think we all do this now. Yeah. I it have never been. fails. I, I'm I'm not even in pain when I do that. It's just uh, it's like oh. yeah. <laughs> I have a definite, I have a definite bedtime and a definite like wake up time. Like I have to be in bed. I have to be like I don't stay up late. Like that's not on New Year's. I was like I'm not sure I'm gonna make it to midnight. And <laughs> not like you, or at least not who you used to not be. Not who I used to be. I'm a different person now. Yeah. <laughs> um, um. So I have the. Where's my glasses? I can't find my glasses. Where's my glasses? Gosh darn it. And they're so, on your head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think mine would probably be naps. I love taking a nap. Um, oh, Babies do that. I also just enjoying quietness, like just being left alone in quiet solitude, having my tea. Um being in my robe, having like an old person candy. Um, no, I don't have old person candies. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of any other old person habits I have. You are just an old man. Yeah, just being grouchy. I like being grouchy at people. I enjoy that. Um, being a bit crotchety. Jen, do you have old people habits? I do. Um the worst one lately is I've been doing the whole when I was growing up, you know, like back in my day. And it's like, what's happening? Uh, am I not too young to be saying that? But I'm saying it all the time now, all the time. I've totally lost touch with like pop culture, too. like so many things. In pop. I'm like, what are kids saying these days? Like, we're like, I have no, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, I've got another old, I've got another old person habit. It is my, um, where is it? My high blood pressure medication. <laughs> <laughs> Taking medicine for my high blood pressure, otherwise my eyes will explode. Um, yeah. Yeah. Lisa? Okay. That would be a good live, though, Anthony. If your eyes exploded, that would that would Whoa. be that good. Would be, yes. <laughs> that would All be. right. What are the questions? <laughs> okay. If you were suddenly arrested for no reason and your face was flashed all over the news, what would your family and friends assume that you did? God. Hmm. I don't know. Wait. Can you ask that again? If you were suddenly arrested for no reason. And your face was flashed all over the news. What would your family and friends assume you did? They know I was arrested. They know I was in jail. They only see it on the TV. Okay, because I'm like, I'm, they might assume I was kidnapped or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> um. <laughs> my my parents would probably assume some sort of felony. <laughs> oh. Probably could not. I could probably not get bail on. I'll just say that. <laughs> what my parents would think. are probably surprised by nothing so i think we'd just be like what <laughs> um jen i mean this is a hard one i don't it is a hard one i feel like people would be shocked but i mean they'd probably assume i got in some sort of fight with someone i mean <laughs> that's probably the most true. likely i think verbal yeah. or physical well physical. you can get arrested <laughs> I mean, Jen if I'm is, arrested, it's going to be physical, right? <laughs> Jen is kinesthetic with her crime. Yeah. That's probably, that's a good one. That's a good one. It's a breakdance fight, though. It's a breakdance fight. It's a dancing fight. <laughs> is that when you break the person's legs? <laughs> Lisa? I am still stumped. I thought it was a good question, but I didn't have an answer. So what would they assume... Yeah, Lisa. What would we assume? What would we assume? We should just say it about each other. What would we assume Lisa would be arrested for? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think white, about white collar getting, crime. Getting into fights, right? <laughs> I can imagine her like hitting somebody with her purse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like being mama bearing it, like with. You know, somebody got near her granddaughter, she smacks him with her purse. I could see that happening, totally. <laughs> Jerome? 
I, I can't think of anything s- severe enough to the point where they'd show my face on TV, but I don't know. Just to answer the question, maybe illegal streaming or something, probably. If uh, my family, this person no, knows. my family, they hate when I may or may not do it, but if it's occurred, my family's hated the fact that it's happened. So. <laughs> Ever, we all know that Jerome pirates movies and <laughs> More so sports, if it has happened or if, not. Not saying you did. Just in case the ESPN is watching and wants to partner with certified life coaches. <laughs> you've never, ever stolen sports before. <laughs> All right. I think that should wrap it up. Uh, thanks for tuning in and being playful with us. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment. Join us next Tuesday at 4 p.m. where we finish off our productivity series. I don't know what we're being productive with next week, but we'll if talk you about it. Between now and, and then, we're listening. Yeah. Um, and then be sure to take our classes where you can be productive and have fun getting your certification mm-hmm. as a life coach. Yeah. At certifiedlifecoachinstitute.com. Classes are $9.95. Thank you, Anthony. Okay. All right. Bye. Goodbye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning into today's episode. Once again, this is brought to you by Certified Life Coach Institute. We're an ICF accredited school who certifies our life coaches in three day online intensive courses. In addition to other podcast episodes, feel free to check us out every Tuesday at 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time on YouTube or Facebook for our CLCI Lives, where we get together and discuss various topics that are centered around sharpening your skills so you can become a better certified life coach. For more information, feel free to visit us at certifiedlifecoachinstitute.com. Until next time, be well.